Everybody and how is it going? Welcome to PlayStation's Crossbar, your home for everything football and FIFA. Whether it's competitive FIFA or FIFA Ultimate Team, we will have you covered over the duration of today's episode. My name is Brandon Smith and joining me as always, hosting this show with me, is Richard Buckley. Rich, we're back again for another episode of Crossbar. More importantly though, FIFA 21 has hit the ground. And have you hit the ground running with FIFA 21? That's the question I've got for you. <sighs> Um, but a little bit, a little bit. It, it, it's taken me a little while to get used to the new mechanics, to get used to how the game's feeling, because it is a lot more different from FIFA 20, but I'm enjoying it. I, I'm really enjoying FIFA 21, and how are you doing? Are, are we going to hit Gold 1, do you think, this year, Brandon? It's the aim. I can see the little Gold 1 badge behind you. Is Gold 1 on the radar this year? I hope it is. I hope it comes earlier than it did. I mean, it took me long enough and, and many years to try and get there. But no, to be honest, I'm enjoying FIFA 21. I'm sure you guys at home watching uh, today's Crossbar episode also hopefully will be. For me, it's just more attacking. It's probably harder to defend. But overall, I just think we're going to see more goals this year, Richard, in the Open Series and in the competitive year. I mean, sort of a couple of words from you, FIFA 21. Happy with it or...? Yeah, very, very happy. And uh, I've seen a lot of the pros happy as well with how the game is going in FIFA 21. There's a lot to talk about in today's episode of Crossbow. We've got the usual news happening of everything that's recently just been announced in the world of FIFA 21 in the Open Series. We're going to have a guest joining us as well a little bit later on in the show when we recap the Open Series. And then last but not least, we will have Rich's famous tips as he's helping us uh, get better on the game of FIFA in general. But I mean, first and foremost, let's head into the news and find out what is happening in the world of FIFA. <laughs> Well, we had some huge news to kick things off and more importantly, to kick off the competitive year for FIFA 21. A massive announcement for myself and Richard as two people that have been involved in competitive FIFA and FIFA esports for quite a few years now. And that was the announcement that came from EA first originally regarding the global series, Rich. And that announcement was that everything is going to be online now. Yep. I mean, with the world as it is at the minute, I think this is a great step forward. People were wondering, is it going to be sort of suspended for a year with events not really being able to take place at LAN? But EA have said, we're going to continue. It's going to be more regional based events. You can see how the winter month is looking. October, we had an event with Twitch Rivals. We've got events with YouTube Gaming, the FIFA 21 Challenge at the end of October. In November, that's when it kicks off South America. We've got uh, basically all the regions broken down through, I think, the six different regions, um, Europe and North America, South America being sort of some of the vocal points where there's more events from those regions, but also Oceania, East Africa, West Africa, also getting their sort of time to shine. And I think they've taken EA of what they did really well in the Summer Cup series, developed it a little bit more for more of an eco, um, ecosystem for an entire year. And this is how we're looking with the road to the FIFA e World Cup. Break it down for me, Brandon. Yeah, definitely. I think on top of that, a huge announcement that hasn't been touched upon is there'll be $3 million in prize money over this year. It's all going to be online. They've added an extra, I believe, a million dollars in total on top into that pot. There's going to be five events from North America, Europe and South America, online events. And as you said, Richard, uh, there'll be three events for Oceania, I believe it is East Asia, and then West Asia and South Africa. So everybody's going to be involved still. We've got some new nations as well on to that list. India now are eligible to compete this year. So looking forward to seeing how they can get themselves involved in the global series. The usual events, E-Champions League, E-Libertadores will also be taking place. And on top of that, we will have the FIFA Majors. It's been a rebrand this year to FIFA E. That includes the E-Club World Cup, the E-Nations Cup, and that pinnacle event in the grand final. So lots of news happening in the world of competitive FIFA. And fingers crossed, another great year, Richard, because we didn't get to crown an E-World Cup champion on FIFA 20, did we? No, we didn't, unfortunately, with, with everything that was happening. But I think as we've seen the events sort of coming up for FIFA 21, we've also got the new content. This is what I get most excited for, Brandon. And we're kicking off FIFA 21 with the ones to watch. This is something that I think every single year it gets better and better. The hype for the summer transfers is here and this was the first team that was brought out in the one to watchers. Werner, uh, ZH, 
Allen, Gareth Bale, Thomas Partey, who's already got an inform. He's already been upgraded to an 86 rated as Thomas Partey. Odegaard up to an 85. This is hype, and I'm so looking forward. That was only Team 1. We got Team 2 as well, Brandon, in the One to Watch promo. I'll be honest, Richard, I've lost count on Foot Champions on FIFA 21 of how many of these players I've already faced up against and how many of these players have unfortunately scored many goals against me um, in just my first weekend league. For me, and someone who's on a road to glory hasn't got the biggest coin budget, Nathan Ake, that one to watch, is a decent little foot item at the back in a Premier League team for me. On top of that, who's your sort of one player you would love to buy right now if I gave you the coins to do so? Well, I mean, Bayern Munich are looking uh, exquisite so far in the Bundesliga. I think Leroy Sane is going to get many an inform in this upcoming calendar year. I think um, Rodrigo for Leeds is, is a nice little purchase. He's very good already at an 82 rated. So imagine he gets a couple of informs, maybe go up to an 86, 87. Thiago, I think we'll get many an inform for Liverpool this year as well. The One to Watch promo is here and I am looking forward to seeing how those players progress throughout the year. And speaking of that, Leroy Sane, Rich, it actually packed him out of the foot draft recently. So cheeky, I think it was about 100,000 100, coins we got into the road to glory. So I was absolutely over the moon with that. But enough about FIFA Ultimate Team, enough about competitive FIFA. Let's turn our attentions to the PlayStation Open Series, Richard, because we have been involved in this tournament since it launched back in June this year. And we've had June monthly finals, July, August, September. We saw last month, of course, you would have seen... Uh, how that all broke down. And we will be speaking to our winner from that September monthly final very shortly. But we've also got the October monthly finals coming up, Richard. And if you don't know about the Open Series and you're at home right now, where can you watch it? And, and what's it all about? Is there money on the line? Is there prizes on the line? There is indeed. The PlayStation Open Series, it's sort of for the players that aren't, professional players, not Nicholas 99 FC, not Mo Alba. This is the player that's a little bit underneath that. They're aspiring pro players. If you want to be part of it, you can win money, dollars. You can win money. And if you win the tournament, if you make it through to the monthly finals, you can be eligible in that prize pool. $1,000 in the monthly finals do get awarded. If you make it to the top four, 12,000 FIFA points that you can put onto your ultimate team to try and pack some beauties. But also, you get great experience of playing competitive FIFA. If you want to go to these tournaments and you want to be part of it and you're thinking, where do I go? How do I sign up? Compete.playstation.com. That's compete.playstation.com. You sign up, you click the tournament that you want to go in. It's very easy. The website, you link your ESL account and your PlayStation Network account. You link them both together and you will literally get notified through your actual PlayStation when the game is ready. You log into your PlayStation, you log into the games, and you literally get playing a couple of steps and you can be winning some prize money. Yeah, you could be involved. You could be a champion. You could even feature on a future Crossbar episode. As you said, a couple of dates. 31st of October is for our European monthly finals. And uh, just after that, as we trickle over into the early hours of the 1st of November, we'll have that North American monthly finals for you as well from October. Of course, you can watch all of that on the Play on PlayStation's exclusive YouTube and Twitch channel, where myself and Richard, uh, of course, will be taking you through all of the action. But enough about... A, sort of around the Open Series in terms of what happened uh, in the last couple of months. Let's have a recap of what happened just in the month gone in September. Let's talk about everything that happened in the PlayStation Open Series. Well, Richard, into our fourth month in the Open Series September saw. We saw new players, new winners, um, unfortunately not many different teams it was uh it was france again france and liverpool were the main teams that everybody has been using in this head-to-head -head format but as we mentioned we saw two new winners and let's look at the brackets for how the tournaments played out because we had hundreds upon thousands of people that signed up to these tournaments didn't we we did indeed this was how the european finals sort of broke down it was karim is back who was victorious in the end that result actually was three nil it was a rage quit in the end from big easy he got out of the game before the game was concluded but karim is back was victorious in EU, we had some real tight games. You see 3-2 there between Sebastian and Adolf. Uh, Big Easy won 4-3 against El Cholo. There were some real tight games. And yet again, we see these names coming back time and time again. Melly Belly, uh, Sebastian Batch, Big Easy. Players' names that we've seen competing 
getting to monthly finals and sort of almost leveling up, you would say, in the Open Series. They might have started out on not even getting through to weekly invitationals and now they're making monthly finals and they are winning tournaments. It's great to see the sort of progression of players and the improvement of players throughout the Open Series. And one thing on top of that, Richard, I, lo I love to see, especially in Europe, we see so many new faces get to knock out brackets, win, you know, the weekly invitationals and the monthly finals. You know, Levy de Weed was the player that won last month's tournament, of course, not um, September, the month before that in August. Nowhere to be seen in that monthly final bracket. Let's have a look at North America to see how that broke down. Because again, Richard, another new winner. Bosniano, a familiar face in the Open Series, got so close to snatching his first ever monthly final victory, but unfortunately just didn't have enough in the tank, did he, to go the extra mile? Not at all. We're going to actually have the opportunity to look at that game in a little bit more detail um, in a couple of minutes' time between Moshin Merck and Bosniano, but look at some of the results in this Open Series. If there was one dominant player, you would say, in the bracket, 5-1 victory and then a 1-0 victory against Ashilis. He conceded one goal in the entirety of the tournament. Moshi Murky was an absolute unit in this tournament in North America. And to be honest, really a deserved winner. Yeah, again, another name that's popped up in the Open Series. Four months down the line was the September uh, monthly final champion in North America. Because, But as you can imagine, you know, so many goals went in. There were so many highs and lows over the four weeks and the monthly finals. If you missed any of the action, check this out because we've got you covered with some of our favourite goals from the month of September. A good chance now for Eastman Dembele. Goal is off his line. Little drag back. Very good with the composure. Deserves a finish. The dive into Bosniano's 4 2 3 Want to see why it's such a good formation for him. Wow, wow, wow. Still on reverse. Elastikov into the finish. Athletic 30. Everyone's back behind the ball for this France side. Chance Mbappe into Ben Yedda. Tell you what, that's an even better ball, Richard. Coman. Acres of space on his own. Seriously <laughs> unlucky. Rami Rex, Ooh. hello. Chance. Oh, finish. Name up. The main attraction of PSG, and that's exactly why. Could go into it. 2 0 down. That is. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, you know, why shouldn't they be bad? Why shouldn't they be involved in teams? Chance. Oh, oh, that's a beautiful pass. That's an amazing assist. Well, what an incredible month that was and an incredible set of games we saw. I think two players have to get a mention from me and you, Richard. First and foremost, Big Easy and E. Rami Rex. They may not have been a champion the month of September, but they were on the showcase for two goals each. And, it, and of course, it was France that scored pretty much all the goals other than Neymar of PSG uh, popping up for one of them. For me, those were the two sort of players that scored a handful of fantastic goals last month. Yeah, I mean, there were so many goals scored in the sort of entire tournament, wasn't there? It, that one at the end is beautiful from carrying me back. The little Cruyff turn and pass. Oh, I could watch that over and over again. And on top of that as well, that goal we saw, I believe it was from uh, Kingsley Coman from Big Easy. A great finish there, just darting in off that 4-2-3-1, which we always talk about and say it is so dangerous to get those wingers forward and to make things happen for that France side. Well, I think we better talk about one of the grand finals, Richard. We're not going to talk about Europe uh, this time round in to today's episode of Crossbar. We're going to talk about North America. We're going to break down to you the grand final that did take place between Bosniano and Moshin Merck. Two players that went that full sort of way to make it to the grand final. $400 were on the line in this one with the chance to call yourself a monthly champion in the Open Series. Let's have a look at that game now and see how it did get broken down over the 90 minutes. And I want to kick off first and foremost, talking about the team choice. Surprise, surprise, it was France against France. But let's have a look at Moshe Merck's lineup in this one. 4-2-3-1 against the 4-2-3-1. So both players equally matched each other up with the formation that I think many players would say on FIFA 20 was one of the most overpowered formations, those two CDMs, which is always Kante and Pogba. And then you're sport for choice in front in your front three. You know, you've got the likes of uh, Kingsley Coman, you've got the likes of Ben Yedder in that cam role, that sort of number 10. And then you've got Usman Dembele. And then there's your front man, you know, you've got Mbappe. If you don't want to do that, you can sort of mix it around and have Griezmann up top, and then you can put Mbappe out wide. But the one thing that really interested me here is we'll have a look at the opposing team of Bosniano, a name we know very well in North America, is that... They literally matched each other up in, in the same way. Griezmann did not get a start. He did not get a nod in that starting lineup. Yeah, I don't want to say that I potentially caused this change, but Rich Tips last month 
Brandon on an episode of Crossbar. Griezmann wasn't in the team. You can see the starting lineup there. 4 2 3 1. You mentioned it perfectly. Usman Dembele out on the left. I think Dembele, we sometimes see him deployed as a central cam, but I do think he is more sort of impactful out wide. He's quicker than the likes of Ben Yedda, who you would have to play out wide then, or Griezmann. And he can sort of damage your opponent more in that wide area where. Typically, France are a little weaker in the fullback area. So Dembele and Coleman, they've got to be the wide players for me. Well, that's how they both started this game, Richard. Both in a 4-2-3-1. It was actually Moshe Merck that had the best chance in this game. And that came just after 13 minutes. You can see it here. Varane dived into a tackle on Kingsley Coleman. And what an opportunity this was, Richard. Literally 13 minutes into the game. Yeah, it was a sort of a collision inside the box. And Ben Yedder stepped up over the spot. He goes for that bottom left corner and drags it wide. Very rarely do you see a penalty missed. Yeah, 15 minutes later after that initial penalty miss, you're thinking Moshe Merckx might be thinking, you know what, I've just missed an unbelievable chance there. However, it didn't phase him. One thing I loved about this chance and one thing I loved about Moshe Merckx's gameplay in general was that he loved to get the fullbacks involved. You saw Hernandez get involved there. Lovely little scoop turn to create the chance and Mbappe made it 1-0 on the 30th minute mark. Yeah, you saw the patience in the build-up, the absolute composure inside the box as well. Mbappe scooped turn around his man and beautifully finished into the bottom corner. But Bosniano wasn't out of the game. He did create chances. This one, Mbappe stop inside the box, drag back. And Usman Dembele, we talked about him earlier, putting it wide from around seven yards out. Inexcusable miss from Usman Dembele. No idea how that chance didn't go in. And also, how... Did this chance not go in? What a ball across that box that was. Hugo Lloris. We give him so many plaudits in this front of the team. But how on earth has he saved that one? That could have been, right at this point, 3-0 before half time for Moshin Merck. However, there was one final chance for Bosniana. And I just want to highlight here, look how many blue French shirts are around that ball in that 4-2-3 one, making it so difficult for Bosniano to sort of break down Moshin Merck. Yeah, I also want to pose a question to sort of anybody watching as well, if you're in this situation, do you think, what is your reaction if the referee blows for half time when he does, okay? I've watched this multiple times and I do not understand why the referee is blowing for half time. So the free kick goes short, Pogba dinks it up, he goes back to the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper passes it straight to Pogba and the ref blows half time. The controller, oh, I don't know what I would do. I, I'd be contemplating closing the game. Well, that's how the first half did finish. An unbelievable chance for Bosniano. However, 10 minutes after the restart, Richard, Bosniano still wasn't happy. So he went into his in-game custom instructions and tactics and he made a couple of changes, didn't he? Yeah, he went from sort of balanced into a pres uh, press on heavy touch. He then put his depth and his width higher as well. And what he's doing here is in the actual instructions, he's gone with his two CDMs of Pogba and Kante from stay back or attacking to balanced. His fullbacks from stay back or attacking to balanced. It's an aggressive change. This can work one of two ways. You're either going to get back into the game and you're going to press higher up the pitch and win the ball back, or you're going to get hit on the counter. And we will see in the last 30 minutes which of those two results did happen. Well, as you said, Bosniano naturally just trying to fly players for but look at this every single french shirt back inside Moshe Merck's uh, box there you can see the chance and then 10 minutes after that Richard this is where Moshe Merck ran away from the game you can see the defense is all over the place from Bosniano a lovely one two in the box between Dembele and Mbappe made it two goals to the good and for me with 20 minutes left in the tie that was job done there was no way back for Bosniano yeah it was a very classy performance from Moshe Merck from start to finish and you see here the referee does blow full-time. Moshi Merck was your victor, and we've seen how he won as well. A fantastic performance from start to finish. And look at the stats. 94% passing accuracy, five shots, four on target. Bosniano did not have a shot on target. What a performance from Moshi Merck. Yeah, huge congratulations. He is the September uh, North American champion. $400 in his back pocket. And as you said, a new name into the winner's book on the Open Series. But here at PlayStation, here at Crossbar, we like to go that one step further for you at home. And do you know what? We've got Moshe Merck joining us live right now from the United States of America. Moshe Merck, first and foremost, thank you for joining us. And a huge congratulations on the win in September. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate it. Amazing stuff. Amazing. I mean, Rich, have you got some questions to kick things off for him? Again, a new winner, a new name that came out in the Open Series and a dominant performance in that grand final. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the first sort of thing that I was going to ask you is just seeing the highlights back from the game. Um, Two-part question. Firstly, how were you going into the final? Were you nervous at all? Um, what were your sort of preparation like going into the tournament? Um, so Bosniana is a player I have played quite a few times in in like the past FIFA 20 before the Open Series. I played him in foot champions. I played him in qualifiers. So I know his play style. So I was kind of nervous because I know he's a like he's a tough player to break down defensively. But I, I was playing good FIFA, so I did trust myself at the same time. Yeah, and then the second part of that question, we saw the stats at the end of the game. It was about as dominant as performance as you would have dreamt of. Zero shots on target, Bosniano registered. What were your tactics going into that game? Um, don't give all your secrets away, but were you maybe on a low depth? Were you on a low width? What yeah, was yeah. the sort of key to victory in that final? So I was running a three depth, uh, four width on defense, and I had my outside cams on comeback on defense. And I guess that did the job and I had it, my defense compact. Amazing stuff. I mean, it's great to sort of get in the mind of tactically of, of many players here in the Open Series. I mean, one question from me. What is it about the Open Series that made you sign up in the first place, Moshima? Was it the prize money? Was it the opportunity to compete? You know, just want to know, what was it about the Open Series that sort of really intrigued you? Um, yeah, I'm just honestly sorry. I was watching one of the FIFA Global Series and it said that going to PlayStation dot compete, obviously, to join the Open Series and there's prize money. And obviously no entrance fee, so like it's an easy chance to maybe, you know, win some money, showcase some talent. So I thought, why not? And final question from me before we let you go in, Moshin. Um, FIFA 21 is here. What is your expectations for FIFA 21? Are we going to see you at a live event? Um, I hope so. I mean, that would be amazing, wouldn't it, if he could make it that far? My question, are we going to see you in another monthly finals in the Open Series on FIFA 21? Um, I will try my best, yes. So you could, you possibly could. Amazing Looking stuff. Moshima, thank you so much for joining us. Again, a huge congratulations on the win in September. I mean, what are you spending the $400 on? Is it, is it going into the savings or are you treating yourself to some FIFA points? Where's that money going? Uh, yeah, maybe just get load up some FIFA points, try to get a good team. <laughs> Great to hear. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, Moshin. Thank you All so right. much for joining us right. live from uh, the United States of America. Look after yourself and fingers crossed we will see you in another tournament in the Open Series, my friend. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, mate. There we have it, Richard. Moshin Merck loved uh, to, to chat about that result. And I think the one thing that interests me and any, anyone that's watching, I'm a FIFA fan or a, a FIFA player, is just sort of getting in the mindset tactically of just going from a casual player to sort of a, a mid-competitive player how important sort of custom tactics are and instructions in, in any sort of team? Yeah, absolutely. It's that extra 5% that gives you the advantage of a sort of a regular player that's not gone into those instructions and tactics. I think it just shows as well how open the Open Series is. He was watching an EA event. He saw that the Open Series was advertised. He got involved and he's walked away with $400. That's as easy as it is. Again, Get involved on the Open Series, compete.playstation.com, sign up, and you can be like Moshin Merck in the upcoming months. And the best thing he said on top of that, Rich, he said it's free to sign up. What have you seriously got to, to, to lose? You know, if you're playing four of those weekly tournaments plus a monthly final and you're dominating, you could be walking away with some serious prize money. I think that does it for the Open Series recap. Richard, is it that time again? I don't know how you've got your own segment on the Crossbar Show, but it's called Rich's <laughs> Tips. Rich, what are you talking to us about today? So in this Rich Tips, we're going to be talking about FIFA 21 and dribbling. If you're struggling on how to dribble, I've got a couple of real key tips and key sort of improvements to your dribbling game. Have a little watch of this. There is a bunch of new dribbling techniques and sort of fundamentals that you have to learn in order to successfully dribble around players and create space in and around the box. Today, we're going to be looking at agile dribbling, strafe dribbling, and also the bridge touch. Firstly, let's look at agile dribbling. What do you need in your player to be good at agile dribbling? Well, a player with high ball control, high dribbling, and good reactions. They're sort of the three main skills that you need. You don't need any skill moves particularly, but if you have higher skill moves, for example, 
Mbappe and Neymar, typically they're going to have higher dribbling stats. What you want to do, agile dribbling, you want to hold R1 on your PlayStation controller and use the left stick. Just a couple of touches, this is just me touching the left stick, left to right, and it opens up so many avenues. You've got your defender in front of you, you send him left and right, and then you exit out with the sprint button, enabling you to get away from the man after taking him on. The next thing we're going to look at, strafe dribbling. This is all in L1. It keeps the ball a little bit closer to your body. Again, what you want to do, you want to exit out of this skill move using the right back bumper. R2, using the sprint, creating lots of space between you and the defenders. The last thing we want to look at, if you're not really one for agile dribbling, just straight pace. All you need to do for this, the bridge touch. Double tap, R1. That's all you need to do. You're one-on-one -on -one with the defender. You're wondering where to go. Just double tap R1. You'll knock it around him, and then your player will run the opposite away around him. One final look at Agile Dribbling. This is more my favourite out of the three techniques we're using today. R1 on the edge of the box. Just your left stick, left to right, left to right. Wait for the space to open, and then you can unleash a fantastic strike with Mbappe. And there we have it, Rich. Thank you so much for that. Another episode there of Rich's Tips. Agile dribbling on FIFA 21. And the best thing of all, that was Mbappe. So if the Open Series continues to run as it does, if you play him in France, you will get to use that player and hopefully that technique in your game on FIFA 21. However, unfortunately, that is all we have time for today in today's episode of Crossbar. We've had Moshe Merck, our winner from North America. We've wrapped up the Open Series from the last month and look forward to what is coming up at the end of this month in October. We've looked at brand new news in the competitive year, the one to watch promotion and the new players that have just moved clubs and of course got those big upgrades on FIFA 21. But that's a wrap from all of us here, myself, Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. From all of us here at PlayStation and Crossbar, look after yourself, stay safe, and we'll see you very, very soon. Until next time, bye-bye.